Somebody told me once that if an engineer builds a house and the house collapses for any reason, and the people that are in the house at that point in time would probably get injured or some of them might even lose their lives. And that if an architect probably designs a structure, let's say a bridge, and for any reason something happens and the bridge <coughs> collapses, excuse me, that the cars that were there at that point in time and the people will be affected, some might lose their lives, some might get injured. But when a teacher does the wrong thing, teaches the wrong thing, or teaches the right thing, in other words, when a teacher teaches, it affects generations unborn. Today is a great day for teachers. All over the world, teachers are being recognized and remembered. There's also this saying that a teacher's reward is not here on earth. <laughs> they say it's in heaven. So in other words, the saying, it's not here that you get a reward. Uh, teachers are almost are always seen as poor, neglected, and all of that. Today, it's not about some philosophical stuff. It's about my story. I have a lot of people, so many people that have affected me in my journey in life. But I want to talk about a few of them, basically my basic school teachers. When I got into primary school, I was in my day, you have to get to probably six, eight years before you get into primary school. But I got into primary school when I was about five. Well, uh, that's another story. And I was always crying. I was shy. I was kind of timid. I, w I wouldn't go to school and all of that. So from my primaries, one, two, I was always scared. Each time I was time to go to school, I was scared. And primary three, I was about the same. I got to primary four and everything kind of changed. Well, it started in primary three and primary four was because the class, the form teacher then, I don't know, I can't remember her surname. I don't know if, I think what I want to mention is her surname. I can't remember the first name. Okay. Mrs. Wosu. She was the first teacher. I could remember that was very protective of me. She felt I was, I talked less in class. I was always, even if I knew the answer, I would hesitate, but she would pull it out. I remember a girl, I, I could still remember the name Daba, was trying to, you know, you know, pounce on me. He was, I remember the teacher using the word pounce. Why are you trying to pounce on him? He's a man, he's a woman. Why are you? I could still remember that many, many years ago after. Many, many years after. So she was the first teacher that, you know, kind of took that thing away from me, broke that ice. So I remember her. Then I remember Mr. Wa, my primary school days. Mr. Wa, when you misbehave, would put you against the wall. Not these days, back in the day, where corporal punishment was like normal. So he would put you against the wall and he would flog your behind, you understand what I mean? And I, I keep remembering, you say, don't touch, don't even scratch. If you touch it, if you touch it, I deal with you. And so we're shivering, I give you six strokes of the cane, three strokes of the cane, and you can't touch your butt, you can't touch your, your, your Botox because you touch, everything is canceled. But he was a symbol of discipline. He was a symbol of com control. It was a symbol of self-control. So whenever we wanted to do something, it's like people, you just say, I'm going to report to Mr. Wa, and automatically everything, the stupidity, the foolishness just dies down. I still remember him. Mr. Wa, I don't know where you are at the moment. I don't know if you're still alive. If you are alive, I don't know if this video will ever get to you, all right? But you know what? I really do appreciate everything that you did for us. Well, now I want to talk about someone that really changed my life. That's Mr. Jones Edo. Mr. Jones Edo. Now, I met Mr. Jones Edo after my secondary school days. I mean, after secondary school, we're having preparatory classes. I wasn't one of those, you know, guys that boom, 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 fly. I went, to, I went to a very, I went to a great, I, went, I, don't, I don't want to say if I went to a great secondary school or not, but, you know, we went through, I went through some very 
tough, rough times, but that's a story for another day. But I attended this extramural class and then I met Jones. I met Jones, I met a couple of people, Olu, Alex, a couple of them. But I want to talk about they were great guys, but I want to talk about Jones. I was this chap that was a caricature type. I'd, I'd grown to be outspoken, but I'd laugh at almost everything. I'd choke with almost everything. I was almost not serious about anything, but trust me, I'd listen in class. So one day, Jones then threw um, a competition and said, anybody that could come out of the class and what he's been teaching for the past three months, for everybody, anybody could come out and answer any question. So it was a challenge for me. So friend, friends of mine, um, um, uh, Steve, Amakri, Donald, we all we, we, was, we were going to the library every now and then. These were great guys that really inspired me. They never probably know about this, but they really inspired me. Um, Amakri, I mean, um, I mean um, Amakri was good at um, physics or chemistry. Jones was very good. I mean, um, film, what's his name? Steve was good at physics and Donald was good at, at biology. I was good at nothing. <laughs> I was good at nothing. So I just, you know, I never trusted, I never believed in myself. That's what I'm trying to say. So when Jones put up this competition, I would, I went and studied all the words, idiomatic expressions, vocabulary, everything that he taught us. And then at the end of the day, long story short, people came out of the class, the class, the stood in front of the class, they asked them questions and they couldn't answer. Some of them failed some of the questions, did their best and then it was my turn, I came out. When I came out, I started throwing questions left, right and center and I answered all of them. And I won the prize for the day. I think it was the, the fee for the next month or so. You were going to get your fee for the next month fee. But it, this is not about me to so take me out of the picture, right? As I was working out that, the Jones called me and said, you know, if you pay attention to English language, if you pay attention to your studies a, bit, a little more, you will do a lot better. That was the first time somehow we said it, but it sank. All right. So I started paying attention to my studies, to what I was learning, to English language, not like I'm, I'm an expert at English, no, but I became more conscious of my utterances, how I formed words, framed sentences. I became a lot more conscious. So Jones was a turning point. And what I have learned, what I learned from Jones allowed me to, to penetrate so many places. Uh, during my high institution days, I would have to teach in secondary schools in order to take care of myself. I'll have to teach in extramural at extramural classes, you know, go we used to call they call them lessons, you know, I go there evening classes to teach. And every time I went to teach, I had taught English language, test of I mean oral English, preparing children for test of orals. And it, it always gave me an edge. Also my confidence, wherever I found myself expressing myself. Trust me, I believe strongly that it's okay to feel inferior, but it's not okay to stay inferior. So when I walk into a place and I feel kind of inferior, it sends me a message that there are some people here I need to up my game to get to that level. So it becomes a challenge. I don't stay there, I work to grow. Those were the things, some of the things I learned from Jones. And so Jones, Edu, wherever you are in the world, trust me, I appreciate you today. Okay, you taught me uh, amongst other uh, teachers but uh, I'm talking about you today. I don't know what you've been through in life, what you're going through, where you are, but I hope you get this video. Even if you don't, trust me that I appreciate you. There's one person I seldom talk about, but as I just was about to put this video together, I thought about him and he is late, but I like to talk about him. I started reading at age five. He was shocked. Started screening at age five. I started reading at age five. At age five, and I started public speaking. Speaking in public at I think age seven. How? There was this man. Whenever I'd finish at uh, at close from school, he would take me to his office, and he gives me lunch, and then the next thing he would do is 
He will teach me how. O N. We didn't have all these sounds. A E E. We A E. You know all that stuff. We didn't have all that. So A B O K. We didn't have. So we're just O N. On I N E. You know. So he will teach me all of that. Then after teaching me two letter words, he said teaching me three letter words. A E R. I mean uh, maybe um, I B I E. You know all that stuff. And then four letter words. I N T O. You know into into you know something just all that stuff so that was how he started every single day every day non-stop and he was a civil servant he created that time every time and in no time in a couple of months despite the fact that I was a very i was a very playful child shy but very playful all right you know but he helped me the first word and then from that, he taught me polysyllabic words. The first word I ever pronounced on my own was the word salvation. So he spelled the word and told me to syllabificate, to break the words. And so I broke the words. The word salvation. Already I knew that every T-I-O-N, S-I-O-N, C-I-O-N, that was the way he taught me. So all I needed to do was to uh, pronounce the other syllables and the second word polysyllabic word I ever pronounced by myself was illustration he's late but I appreciate everything he's done for me he's my father Mr. Gardner Sander I mean he never he didn't know so much but what he knew he helped me he was one of the best teachers I ever ever you know, I seldom talk about him. I just remember today as we just about, so that you don't talk about this man. I mean, he taught me how to read. And my first, I think my first to second year of primary school. Not like today where you have children reading at three, you know, back in the day, people get to eight, 10, 11. So whenever I got into a place and I read, I was like a star. So shout out to all the teachers out there. Trust me, I also taught for nine years nine years i taught in notary primary secondary school and tutorials in the high institution so and i'm still teaching today and that's why i also appreciate um the business that i do today which is more about knowledge teaching people how they can benefit in the digital finance world anything that has to do with knowledge i'm in for it but this is not about my business today it's not about me it's about you teachers out there who are teaching our children teaching our friends our brothers and sisters please trust me we value you and from me and my family to all the teachers in the world we love you and keep up the good work bye for now and stay safe my name is Talon Abrevi Samuel and I love you all teachers and I want you all to go and succeed in it